Okay, we're downstairs on our isolation board because we're going to do the experiment for people who looked at the video, the last video we did. You start to understand that we're talking about looping and we were talking about the other side of the coin over unity. As we start to show you how we do these things and explain them, you'll start to understand that I am the originator of both technologies over unity and looping. People don't like to accept it, but it's a stolen technology and people made up false information about it because they didn't understand what and how it functions. But right now, we're going to cover looping, which is the other side of the coin of over unity. Now, looping in this system we um, is bigger. We did a smaller version so we can break it down so people could see how if you had two solar cells that one can run in the loop, making sure this whole system has power because the lights stay on. And then you have another one to give energy to charge your phone. That was just a small demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to go much bigger because this is a 60 amp. And we want you to notice these cords, okay? Which is at the battery terminal, okay? And there's only one set of cords and we're gonna put two set of cords. So when we plug in our battery, the system will come on and this will be explained that power is going into our system. Okay, so let's do number one. And our system is coming up. It noticed what type of battery. And let's hit enter. And it says it's got 37.58 volts on this battery. Nothing's coming in from the solar, which you can see on this side right here. And this is the battery. This is the wattage. This is the amperage, okay? So, we understand we plugged in this battery. So where does the loop come in? Let's set that up. Okay, we got it set up here. We have two cables coming out of it. The same terminal, let's look at this. This is the battery terminal, and we have two sets of cable, positive and negative, positive and negative. This one goes to the battery. And these two right here are the jumper cables. Okay. And we're going to put those jumper cables into the solar. Jumping from the battery over to the solar. Meaning that whatever battery power we have is going to go through the solar and back into the battery. If that's not a loop, please comment and say this is not a loop and tell us what it is. Okay, don't leave us hanging. Just explain if I take these, these the wires coming from the battery, loop it back over here, and you'll see this on the monitor when I set this up. The energy goes back up into the system and then back into what? The battery. And that is a loop. That's what we're calling a loop. Just like we did the loop with the solar last time, we used the battery, one of the solar, and then we plugged it back into the battery. We're going to do this on a big system, which is an MPPT, and it makes a difference on how this functions. So, let's get that set up. And remember, part one, we're showing the battery. Part two, showing the jumper cables. And then part three is to actually get this set up so we can see what the heck is going on on the meter up here, okay? And I just wanna get a good shot on how these wires are set up. 
Okay, positive, negative. Okay, so we got a good shot of that. So we know is easy to follow because we don't have wires like I did on last time I just demonstrate this. So we got short wires and is easy to recognize. Let's set this up. Okay, we got it all set up. And we're ready to see what is going to happen. Okay. So, we understand this is the battery terminal. And we understand these are the jumpers jumping from the battery over to the solar. Battery to the solar. Okay. So, when we plug this in, is this going to blow up? Let's see. Okay, it's boosting up. Push button, enter. And look at what's going on here. It's saying that it is 37.58 volts in the battery. And that it go over here. It's saying the solar, which the battery thing is 37.4 which is a little drop down because of resistance. So that means when they talk about having more power here than is going in here, it's wrong. You're going to have loss. So, but we don't have that much loss. Okay. So how is this being weaker going to charge this? It's not by itself. So what is it good for? Because I'm going to put up this video of what well, a picture of this uh, video that I did and I'll put it uh, a link to it in the description. Why? Because I did this before. And the number one thing that they talked about is that what is it good for? What is this good for? You looped it so it doesn't make any difference. What can you use this for? That's what we're about to uh, describe because it goes to talk about the solar that we were making, the ones we were building ourselves. And they said, why would you use LED lights to run your solar? You're, you're going to be at a loss. You don't get full sunshine. Well, guess what? See that 37? Your solar has to go from zero up to whatever it puts out okay mines do not mines start out with 37 volts okay it starts out that way so now we add to that so now what we're going to do is add to the solar part of this and we're going to put one of our simulated solar so we can see one of these so we can see how much energy we're actually putting in this and how much we're saving. So we can see everything that's going on. Okay. So we'll come back in another, another part and have that all hooked up. Okay. We got it all set up and the battery is on. Let's see. If we zoom in, turn on the backlight, that we see that we have what we had before. Uh, 37, that hasn't changed. Uh, 54, this has changed. This has went down just by one, okay, because it was four, now it's three. But we still have 37. But if we looked at this battery charger, we see 37.3 which is exactly what that is. That's because energy is feeding back into this. No amps or real volts is being pushed in this because I turned it all the way down by this uh, real strat. So let's see if we put some power in there. Okay, I just wanted to get it all set up here. And I also wanted to bring up one more point. One, this is the energy in watts which we have this plugged in. Let's follow the cord back up to our isolation board. And you see that's what's running this. Okay. 
So we understand that this right here has 0 0.5 uh, thing. That's going to go up. But that's why we want to measure this, okay? So let's put on this backlight and see. Once we get enough energy in here, which we means that we have to put 37 uh, volts, this will start going up. So let's see if we turn this up. Oh, there goes some amps. And this is now turning up. And you see how it jumped to five at the end there? See how that jumped to five? It was at three. This now battery is charging. And you can see it's going up. That's all we want you to understand. So we're charging using the battery energy so we don't have to spend as much solar because this is a solar simulator. But we don't have to uh, think that's less than an amp. So let's go over here and see. It says we're putting in 37 watts. That's about what's up here. Because the, it automatically, remember how it was back feeding here is to tell it what to do. It wants to make it equal to whatever the battery is. But once we pushed it higher, it's automatically going to put that back into the battery. Okay. So. All we need is a solar cell that has that wattage. Okay. And 37 or 38 around that, that size is the solar that we're building. 12 times 3. Okay? Because it was 3 amps. If you looked at the last, the first video when we built our solar cell, it put out 3 amps. And if we add the 12 volts to it, which is a smaller one, we got our number right there. Which means that this battery charges, and this is how we find the experiment on what we can do with what the available solar that we got. Rain or shine, when you do things with that type of solar that we're putting out, and we can add more, we understand that, yeah, it's 37 volts, but look at the amps. OK, now, of course, people are going to ask me, what if you turn it up? OK, we'll see if we turn it up. Remember this number. Thirty seven point eight. Remember that number. OK, so we're going to see point eight and we're going to start boosting that up. Come on. Now it doesn't want to go. Blank. This one does is all the way up. So it doesn't want to go past 37 and it can go up to 40, but it's not going to. But that's all right. We've proven our point. This thing says what? What's that blinking light? Charging. OK, this battery is charging. OK, now, again, if I get my better uh, one, because it says 20, 20 watts. If I go over here and get the simulated solar here so I can turn up my amps and my voltage, uh, it's a better deal. But I didn't want to do all that and take all that stuff down. I just wanted to give you a demonstration on looping. So you see that the energy coming from the battery looping over to the solar and then you see how far can I turn that down? If I turn that down, because remember, it's all about the amps, and that's not even a full amp. Okay, it just clicked off, so I'm going to turn it back up. Oh, and it turned off again. Let's see. I'm clicking it is... Oh, it went off again. See, zero. And it's somewhere in between 19. 
Will it click on? There. And it just jumped up again. See, it's just automatic. I didn't even turn it. So it's telling me that it needs at least 37, 0.34 of an amp. Okay. To get this to turn over, to get this to start charging. Okay. So go back and watch the other videos. Understand how this actually works. Understand the voltage of the uh, uh the solar panel that we're building with LED lights, what it put out. We know at one at one, I mean, at this time, we have one big panel that puts out three amps, and we have one little panel that puts out 12 volts. So the next video that we do is hooking up dismatched solar panels. And we're waiting for our pieces to come in so we can actually make that uh, solar panel that has two intakes. Okay. But that lets you know, again, all this stuff about looping and over unity is 100% true once you understand it. Okay. Now, when I turned that down, notice the watts went down. So let's see if we can get this turned up. We're going to go still under the amp let's see if we can get this to go higher that's high as it's going to go and we got now 19 watts of power going in there so you can see okay all right that's the end of this video. I hope you understood it. I hope I broke it down so you can explain how to do this and how to use the battery as a booster. Okay. This is called looping. And then after we finished how to connect dismatched solar panels, we'll go into a little bit of hyper looping. All right. Okay. I came back to show you where this is at. We were at 37. We are now at 39. And it's 39 in the battery. You see the amps went up a little bit. And the wattage went down. And guess what? Remember we couldn't get this to go past 37? How it locks in? It went to 39 right with it. So it's following exactly like it's linked in. And if we come over here, we're at 19 watts. This right here proves that the solar cells we made with the LED lights can charge this battery using this method of looping energy that loops going back into the solar panels right here. And then adding the solar panels and you're going to charge that battery okay now we understand that let's go over here to me we're using this as a simulated solar that's what we're using this for this is a simulated uh, solar that we're using but in real life we would actually put our LED lights um, as a solar panel into this I wanted to see you that is 10 amps 48 volts and we're not even at 40 yet okay so yeah so now we the only reason why we use this instead of the solar we need to regulate what we can put out okay what numbers do we need how much power does this draw so Guess what? If I, at this number right here, far as watts, you know, that's amps. Matter of fact, let's see if we go over to amps. There's the amps. It's less than one amp. Okay, that's the amps. Can everybody see that? Okay, let's go back over to the wattage. 
okay? So, if we get that wattage, and we understand what this voltage and this amperage is, it means that this system can be put in a car, charged this way from those solar panels, and those solar panels use less energy as far as the, the five uh, five volt LED light to charge the panels. That means that the energy in this battery is over five watts. The energy going into this is over five watts. This right here is charging at nine watts. You know, that's going down as the battery gets full is over five watts. So the whole point is, is that the LEDs that runs the lights itself can do all this right here. Okay, we're back and we left off a critical point. I want you to see these numbers right here and understand what we're doing is we disconnected. That's what we should have done in the regular videos the loop the jumper cables over to the solar we took them off so this is now running just off the simulated solar okay so you can calculate those numbers for people who are following along okay and then we're looking at the wattage we're drawing from the grid okay let's go over to the amperage there's the amps so everybody can see okay everybody's following along so here's the explanation here if uh we're looking at this we know that this number which is going into the solar is higher than this number and if we had this number like we did back over here when we when we jumped it, we wouldn't have to go to 41. It wouldn't be a higher number. It would limit it to this right here because this will make this choke down or bottleneck to this number when you put this into here. Therefore, when you push a little bit more amps and, and notice which amps is higher, this one or the other one. Look at this. Look at the wattage. It's not much higher. But the whole point is, is that when you see all this information, you understand a benefit that if I put the battery itself back into this, this right here doesn't have to be as high a voltage going into this system. So we look back over here. We couldn't get that to go over 37, 39, whatever the battery was, and it's already jumped up. So you can look, go back and look at that and see for yourself that if we just use the energy in the battery, okay, then we don't need as much solar. Okay, let's put that back. Okay. The reason why we wanted you to go back and, and do this again, because we wanted to put these cables back over to the jumper, over to the solar part. Okay, so we can compare. So we put this back to what it was in the video. And then you're going to notice something. Because a lot of people are going to have questions. We want to be honest about this. It says, hey, it did jump down to 39. That's what we call a bottleneck. It forces it down to this level right here. Okay. So why do we have a little bit more wattage? Okay. And the amps seem to gone up. If we go over here and look at this, we see 39.4, which is consistent with the battery, 39.5. And that one says 39.3. So that's consistent. Okay, and the amps seem to be over 20. So what's going on? Is it, is it less efficient? Well, remember, 
when you do this, this feeds back into this system. Okay. So energy is not being utilized. Okay. That's what we call the bottleneck because of this bottleneck right there. And that was important to uh, mention because you think that you're losing energy. Okay. But you're not because this energy, which we're going to show can be saved at the solar panels, which we'll be talking about in the future. What happens to the energy that you bottlenecked? All you have to do is loop it and then you can put it back into the batteries. So it's not lost. Okay. But what we're saving is they remember how this had to be at 41 and it went down to 39. Well, this is where that extra energy is. That bottleneck is when you go into looping, how you can put that into batteries. Let's confirm that. It sounds like the setup you've described involves using a charge controller and battery loop to efficiently manage energy flow within a system without necessarily adding additional solar panels. While the specifics may differ, the concept shares similarities with the equal flow alternator system in terms of optimizing power flow and managing energy inputs. In both cases, one, energy management. Both setups involve managing energy flow within a system to optimize charging and utilization of a battery. Two, looping energy. Your setup utilizes a looped system where energy from the battery is cycled back through the charge controller similar to how the equal flow alternator system balances energy flow between the alternator and potentially solar panels. Three, efficiency. Both systems aim to improve efficiency by utilizing available energy sources effectively, whether it's from the alternator, solar panels, or battery. While your setup may not involve an alternator like in a vehicle, the principles of efficient energy management and utilization are similar to those employed in the equal flow alternator system. Both approaches aim to maximize the use of available energy sources and optimize charging processes. I apologize for the confusion. You were asking about storing excess energy from mismatched solar panels. Yes, at the juncture where the two panels are connected, you could implement a circuit that includes components like voltage regulators and energy storage systems. These components would help capture and store the excess energy generated by the larger panel, which can then be stored in a battery separately from the main system. Later, this stored energy can be used when needed, maximizing overall energy utilization. This process ensures that energy isn't wasted and can be effectively utilized even when the panels have different output capacities. Yes, that makes sense. In the context of your example with cell phones, there are indeed circuits and systems designed to manage energy flow efficiently. One common component is a voltage regulator, which helps maintain a stable voltage level even when the input voltage fluctuates. For your bottlenecking scenario, you could integrate components like voltage regulators or energy storage systems, like capacitors or batteries, into the circuit to capture and store excess energy. This stored energy could then be used to power other devices or to recharge the battery, thus maximizing energy utilization and minimizing waste. In essence, these circuits are designed to optimize energy usage by efficiently managing the flow of energy within a system, ensuring that any excess energy is stored or redirected for later use rather than being wasted. Okay, so now you understand that the energy from the bottleneck, uh, which we seen, can be stored because it energy doesn't just disappear. It has to go somewhere. So we just want to confirm this. Even though this is not 100%, we have to see it. That's why we're building these projects. Look, guys, they've been lying to you, and it's not an actual lie. You know what it is? It's just that they're not going to tell you. And if they don't tell you, then you have to figure it out yourself. Then they say that's what independence is, and most people just want to be told. So 
I'm going through this step by step and I'm trying to break this down for you, for you to understand when someone tells you not to do something because it's not efficient, you have to determine what is efficient for you. If we use LED light, of course, it's not as efficient as sunshine in the aspect of um, getting the maximum amount of light into the solar panels. But you pick up that efficiency because now you get to run at night or when it rains. So you have to calculate that person over here is running efficiently. Is the weather going to cooperate with them? Okay, snow, rain, sleet, fog, all these elements that get in his way of his solar cells. Is it going to cooperate with him? Or we have our system, which is built into our homes or in your basements and what's names that run 24 hours, but don't give you the full utilizations of the solar panel, but does give you energy. Which one is more efficient? That's what they play games with. That's where we're trying to uncover the lies and start showing you these systems in which you can put into your cars, your boats, your what's names. And then you don't have to worry about if the batteries are charged or not because they're going to stay charged. We try to uh, tell you things that already exist. You know, if your battery on your phone is one uh, bar, you plug it in to the shore power and all the point it will charge all the way back up while you're still on the phone. We talked about that with AI and you see what the answers are. You already seen it. Now we're just trying to get you to put two and two together and realize that you can do that with other systems like your solar. That's what the first, the other video was is when we plug in the battery into itself, will it charge up? Yeah, it was five volts, one amp. It will charge all the way up just like your cell phone. Okay. Now we did that with the big system and you'll start to see that this looping thing, the book that I presented may have merits. So when I put it out, think about, would you purchase this product? Or would you say no one wants to know that? See you in the next video.